What's up, dogs and nuggets? Welcome back to the NFL Pickums against the spread and straight up with your boy Hark Dog 25. We're already to week nine. This season is officially over halfway over. 17 weeks, nine. So the it was like Tuesday, the week was half over. Or the, the season was half over, I guess just to say. Um, but let's see how we're doing overall. I am 62, 54, and 4 versus the spread with a 6 6 2 record last week. And win loss straight up is pretty good 73 and 46, 9 and 5 last week. Uh, the spreads are just tough. It's, yeah, there's a few games that I just like the Carolina game. They're up 23 6 or 7 with 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Like, oh yeah, they got this. They can cover it at 7 points. No. Uh, somehow. Uh, hurt shoulder, broken rib. Um, Andrew Luck leads the Colts back, and they go in overtime, cover the spread. So I thought I was gonna make some cash there. Nope, ended up getting like 15th place. I went from third place to 15th. Thanks, Indianapolis. Thanks, Andrew Luck. I hope you rot. Hope you rot in the bottom of the AFC South cellar for 20 years, like, because you've been at the top for a long time. You gotta go to the bottom. Um, Fitz Canada, still the only one playing. Remember, put your picks below. Follow Fitz's formats. He puts the game, and then he puts win and cover, or win and other team covers. Um, and then he actually gives a reason why. Uh, he does very well. Um, we have some good discussions about it. Um, but he was 9-5 like me last week, straight up. He's 78-41 and 41 overall, which is incredible. Incredible picking. And he gets the spread, he was 7-5-2. and two, So he's 38-29-4. and four. Um, nine up against the spread, which is really good. I mean, I'm only eight up, and I consider myself like one of the best pickers in the world. Just saying. Um, but let's get into the picks. As you can see, I've donned it. My old Carson Palmer jersey right here. Official, licensed NFL. I know he's with uh, Arizona, and he's on a bye week this week. But I'm putting it on because I believe in the Bengals. The Bengals are my AFC team. I like seeing the Bengals win. Um, the Packers are my overall team, so what that means, if the Packers and Bengals met in the Super Bowl, I'd want the Packers to win and the Bengals to lose. Um, but if the Bengals made it to the Super Bowl and adjacent NFC team is other than the Packers, Bengals win. So, that's how I justify it. Packers always number one, Bengals 1B, if there is no other option. But it's good to see him. 7-0 uh, so far. Going up against the lowly Cleveland Browns here. And let's see what we got. Uh, they're favored by 10 points. Wow, okay. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Cincinnati at home. Better all-around team. Better all-around defense. Better coaching staff. Um, at home. All the criteria means that they're going to win and cover this game. I think Johnny Manziel is starting for Cleveland this week. Uh, which does not bode well for that offense. So... Uh, Gary Barnish probably won't get as much. Uh, Duke Johnson, um, all those receivers won't get as many yards because McCown was just throwing up a storm there for a while. Travis Benjamin. Um, so probably sit those guys unless you don't have any other option. Cincinnati, A.J. Green. Dalton's probably going to have a good day. I feel like Bernard and Hill, they're splitting it, so it's kind of hit or miss there. They'll probably end up about the same or something like that. But um, Yeah, I got Cincinnati in this game. My boys, they're going to go 8 no. First time ever. Ah, uh, then we got... Wait a minute. No. We're going back to the roots. Charles Woodson. We're going back to the roots. You know it. The Packers. Taking on Carolina at Carolina. Favored by two points. And you know who I'm going to choose here. Green Bay. I'm a homer. What can I say? Um, I couldn't don that Palmer jersey for too long. I actually have a Blake jersey in the closet too. From like... Ooh, 15 years ago, Jeff Blake, I think he was a QB uh, in the late 90s for the Bengals. Um, pretty sad <laughs> that I still have that. Um, but yeah, Green Bay in this game, I think they're going to bounce back. I mean, they had a terrible game plan in Denver last week. They got away from Lacey. Lacey, first two carries of the game, 15 yards, first down, and then they passed the next three downs. Why? Keep running. Run another play. Run on first down. Pound them. Establish that run early. Nope. They went play action right away, and the game was over. They didn't go back to Lacey until the second quarter. And, you know, they finally got a touchdown with them, but they established the run. When they're when a team is focusing on the pass 
as much as teams do against Green Bay, which is probably what Carolina is going to do, you have to run the ball. You have to run the ball, and you have to run the ball well. They started off well, and they didn't run it really much the rest of the game. It was just it was probably one of the worst games I ever watched. I mean, there's no energy on both sides of the ball. There's no urgency uh, like there was with Denver. Um, and Denver just had a better game plan. So Green Bay got beat in all phases uh, Sunday night. So I think you're going to bounce back there and cover Carolina. Um, they don't have any wide receivers. So I feel like if they stop Olsen, they stop Stewart, and contain uh, Cam Newton, which they have a lot of practice doing against Kaepernick and Wilson over the last three years, uh, they should be able to stop Carolina and at least win by a field goal and cover the spread. So let's go next game. New England favored by two touchdowns, 14 points against Washington. And New England is just on an absolute tear. Uh, they tore up Miami. They had 10 days off. Washington still doesn't have much of an identity on offense or a running game. Alfred Morris isn't doing much. Matt Jones are splitting it. Um, Deshaun Jackson still hurt, even though he claimed he was the best wide receiver in the NFL before the season. He hasn't caught a pass this year. Yeah, you're real good, Deshaun Jackson. Real good. Um, but I think New England's going to win and cover this game. It's in Foxborough. Washington, Kirk Cousins. Even with their defense, I, I don't even think garbage time is even going to help them. I feel like New England's going to win by 17 points, like a, say, 35-17, something like that. They're going to they're gonna crush them. So, New England that game. Then, New Orleans at home in the Superdome against Tennessee Titans. Well, let's go over the checklist. Um, home team, New Orleans. Better coach, definitely New Orleans because Tennessee just fired Ken Wisenhunt. QB. Um, Drew Brees is way better than Mettenberger. Um, just offensive line, New Orleans. Defense, even the defense is better. So I'm going to go New Orleans in this game. Yeah, I know it's eight points, but Tennessee just, they have the new coach. I know they're going to want to play hard for them, but I think they just don't have the requisite talent to stand up to New Orleans, who is actually starting to surge now with Drew Brees getting healthy. So New Orleans, that game. Then next game, Buffalo fared by three at home against Miami. Miami coming off that crushing, crushing defeat in uh, in Foxborough where they scored a whole seven points. But at least Lamar Miller got the touchdown. That helped me out with my fantasy team. Um, Buffalo, I think Tyrod Taylor's getting back. That being said, Buffalo is just a dumpster fire. Rex Ryan does not have control over that team. Too many penalties. Too many boneheaded mistakes. I mean, the, the leash is not short. For his players and he's got to start benching players when they start getting into scuffles and I know he's like oh there's a lot of fire on my team you know the fire just cost you 15 yards in the football you know because they were just punting you know it's save for after the game you know hit a punching bag after the game whatever go wrestle go wrestle your other teammates after the game you know just you got to keep your head in the game and be aware that your actions are gonna have some negative consequences if you start pulling some dumb crap. So, I got Miami in this game. I feel like Dan Campbell's kind of got some discipline in that team. The defense is playing way better. They're handing the ball to Lamar Miller uh, a lot. Um, and that's taking a lot of pressure off Tannehill. And he's thriving. You know, they put up a lot of points. Even though New England just crushed him. Um, I think they're going to go up to Buffalo and win. And cover. So, Miami. Next game, Minnesota at home fair by 2.5 against St. Louis. St. Louis is surging with Todd Gurley. But I feel like Minnesota's defense is going to contain Gurley. They're going to make Foles try and beat him. And Foles just is not a... They don't have the talent other than Tav, Tavon Austin there to win you th win against you through the air. So I think Minnesota with the better defense, the better coach, um, good running back, uh, good receiver. Stephon Diggs is on a great pace, um, better old line. I feel like Minnesota is going to win this game. St. Louis is going to lose. And St. Louis doesn't travel very well, even with Gurley. So, because um, they lost and they put up, what, 10 points, 17 points against the Packers. It was 27-10, 20, something like that in Lambeau. And that's with Gurley. So, um, uh, Minnesota in this game for sure. Next game, New York Jets fared by 2.5 at home against Jacksonville. Um, I'm taking Jacksonville in this game. The only reason is because Fitzpatrick tore a ligament in his thumb. Marshall's injured Decker is injured they're all gonna play um and if Jacksonville stops Chris Ivory um Blake Bortles is having a great season Allen Robinson on my fantasy team great season uh they balance it pretty well with TJ Yeldon he gets some yards 
Um, and they're able to force the Jets, you know, a couple turnovers. I think Jacksonville can cover this spread. I'm not sure if they'll win. I think it's going to be a really close game, honestly. But I'll take the Jacksonville Jaguars in this one. Um, I just don't think the Jets have the health and firepower to uh, to win. I mean, after what we've seen them do in Oakland last week, I mean, they couldn't even tackle. They could not even tackle anybody. And they just got run over. Um, so, next game, Pittsburgh. Favored by five at home against the aforementioned Oakland Raiders. Um, Derek Carr and Amara Cooper and Latavius Murray, Andre Holmes, uh, Michael Crabtree. Uh, they are playing very, very well. That offense is pretty explosive. And seeing them 4-3 and three, um, is, is, is good. It's good to see that team uh, back to its original glory, like from the 70s and the early 2000s. Uh, Pittsburgh didn't do much against Cincinnati. Uh, they put up 10 points. You know, Ben's still hurt. He's got to get in the flow of the game, blah, 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 blah. But if he has another down game like that, um, you know, Oakland's just going to run all over him. I think Pittsburgh will still win, but I think it's going to be by a field goal. So I think Oakland's going to cover this spread. Pittsburgh's going to win. Next game, Tampa Bay at home, favored against the, no, not favored, underdogs against the New York Giants by two and a half points. Um, I have the Giants in this game. I just feel, even though Tampa Bay got that big win last week against Atlanta, Atlanta's showing its true colors. It's not a very talented team. They're coming back down to earth. I think they'll probably finish 11 and 5, 10 and 6. You know, maybe go 4 and 4 the rest of the way. Um, I just feel that the Giants with JPP back, it's get a get a little bit more talent on the defensive line. And Eli's starting to chuck the ball around. I mean, Odell Beckham Jr. had three touchdowns last week. They lost. The defense is still bad, but um, Tampa Bay's offense isn't the greatest. If they make Jameis Winston try and beat him and hold Doug Martin in check. I think the Giants are going to win by a field goal on this one. Maybe a 30, I'd say 30-27 type game, 31-28. Uh, they're going to put up some points. Hopefully Odell Beckham gets some more touchdowns for me. That'd be nice. Um, so Giants in that one. Next game, San Francisco at home. Starting Blaine Gabbard, Kaepernick on the bench. and oh, It's just good to see him on the bench after what he did to the Packers for those couple of years. He thought he was the greatest, kissing his bicep. Well, now you can kiss his biceps all the way to the locker room, then from the locker room to the bench, then the bench back to the locker room. He doesn't even have to break a sweat. He can just take his time to get out there. You know what I mean? Uh, I think Atlanta is going to win and cover the four and a half points in this one. San Francisco, I mean, Carlos Hyde is out. He's got no talent on defense. Blaine Gabbert uh, you know, couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. It was just... A bad dumpster fire team and they're gonna win like three games total this year which is San Francisco is a great organization but uh, they don't look great anymore so I got Atlanta this game then Indianapolis at home underdogs by four points against Denver Denver's defense is legit absolutely legit what I saw them do to Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers never threw to his first first read last week it was always drop back First read, covered. Second read, covered. Third read, covered. Oh, crap, I'm sacked. I mean, that's what it was. I mean, he had time to throw the ball, but there was just nowhere to throw. I mean, they, they just had a great game plan um, and great coverage on our receivers. We're missing Jordy Nelson uh, big time. Uh, we need him. We need him to extend the defense, get them out there. That's where Cobb, you know, comes kind of comes underneath, breaks his coverage, and um, you know, was able to get the ball like they were last year. So, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Um, but I think Denver, with that amazing D and Manning, will probably throw a touchdown pass this week. Uh, if he hasn't turned the ball over and C.J. Anderson and Hillman run like they did last week, uh, they're going to win easily in this game. I think they're going to win by 10 points. Indianapolis, even though luck looked a little bit better in that fourth quarter, that team is... There's something wrong with that team. There's something wrong with the management. There's something wrong all around with that organization. And they need to restructure and get some people out and bring some, some new blood in. Um, so I got Denver in this game. Then, of course, the NFC East Sunday Night Football Special. It seems like the NFC East is on Sunday Night Football, I don't know, six, seven weekends a year. You know, it's crazy. Um, Dallas, led by Matt Castle. Hey, Des Bryant's back, but yeah, Castle threw him two balls for 12 yards last week. Awesome for my fantasy team. I'm keeping him on my bench until I see what he can do, or at least until Romo comes back in a couple weeks. Um, Philly, uh, I think they're going to come out strong in this game. 
I think they're going to hand the ball to Matthews, DeMarco Murray, uh, take the pressure off Bradford, and Bradford's going to maintain the game. He, you know, he's not going to, I hope he doesn't turn the ball over that much because uh, he's been a turnover machine this year. So if he limits the mistakes, the turnovers, uh, gets the ball into the hands of his playmakers, um, you know, Ertz and I think Aguilar is finally back playing. Um, obviously, Murray, Matthews, Cooper. And that defense is going to pick the ball off from Castle a couple times. So I got Philly in this game covering the two and a half points. Then, Monday Night Football. The lowly Chargers, who can't beat the lowly Baltimore Ravens, take on the lowly Chicago Bears, who can't beat themselves. Because they got rid of all their players, and yet they started winning. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. Uh, but Cutler's there. Cutler's doing well. But Forte's gone. They're starting Langford um, at running back. Jeffrey had a big game. I feel like if San Diego, even though losing Keenan Allen, they still got Malcolm Floyd, Stevie Johnson, um, Antonio Gates, and my boy Melvin Gordon from Wisconsin needs to show up this week. He needs to show up. I'm sick of starting him every week and getting four fantasy points from him. Get in the end zone. Break a tackle. You know, don't fumble the ball. It's, just, it's sad just watching him week after week after week. He's when you see a player like Gurley who's just tearing it up, and then you got Gordon who's, I don't know, tearing nothing up, tearing sod up, you know, as he's as his face down in it, you know. Uh, but I got San Diego winning covering this game just because it's in San Diego. Um, Chicago, they're not the best team. They don't have a great offense. Um, they definitely don't have a great defense. And I think Phil Ribs is going to chop, uh, chop it up, cut it up, and throw it up. All over the, color, the Chicago team. Throw it up. Blah. <laughs> I started laughing about that um, mid-sentence. But Melvin Gordon, you got to get in the end zone this week. You have to get in the end zone for me. Um, and if he does, San Diego's a winning cover. And I'm going to win this week in my NFL pick -em. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like the video, comment, and subscribe. Leave your picks below. Like I said, put the team, then win and cover, or win and don't cover. Uh, it's easy to do it that way. And I'll see if I can beat Fitz this week. He's been dominating me the last couple weeks. So good luck, and we'll see you next week.